the Torah is clearly of the opinion um, that interpersonal relationships are complicated and that there's no, there's no easy answer to the question of, of why we can't all get along. The, the answer the Torah, actually that the Torah is gonna establish is for whatever you, that it establishes like from the first chapter, uh, you know, right there from Cain and Hevel, you could even argue before, um, that things are gonna be difficult, that human beings are gonna have friction with each other. And it's not gonna be necessarily two strangers having friction with each other, but it might even be brother against brother, that two brothers might really hit a point of friction. Uh, as a matter of fact, the Torah will primarily talk about brothers having friction. Okay, you know, in the Torah, I'll say in the Nevi'im, let's say, or in the Tanakh, certainly there are stories about how B'nai Israel had issues with the surrounding nations. I mean, that's our whole history. But if you think about it, the Torah doesn't expend a tremendous amount of energy thinking about why we have friction with other nations, right? Like, think about all the stories. Like, either we go to war with them or we don't, but there's no, like, deep philosophical thinking about that. The deep philosophical thinking the Torah does do is why is it that even amongst our own intimate family, and it's going to call our own intimate family the, the family of, you know, the Jewish people, or even in a singular land, because it will even talk about Jews with the gedim that live in their land, the strangers in that live in their land. So in this, the intimate circle of the people you're with, your brothers, your sisters, your parents, your cousins, your family, fellow Jews, that the Torah establishes as a given that we're gonna argue with each other and that we're gonna fight with each other and that we're not all gonna get along. And also as a given, that those moments of friction and tension and divisiveness are not healthy for us. And that they, sh like in, in ways that we could avoid it, it should be avoided. So uh, I think about this a, a lot. Um, and I was thinking a lot this week about how we argue with one another and how we have dissenting opinions with one another because because I had an argument with uh, family members, uh, you know, and so it made me uh, it made me think about this a little bit. I want to return, and I'm sure you guys think about it a lot. Also, even after so after class last week, interestingly, somebody called me and said, um, "What do you do when you're at the dinner table and you're somebody that you really care about is saying something completely crazy to your mind? Like, do you get into it? Do you not get into it?" I think that's a very good question. I, I think it's something to, to think about. I wanted to, so I want to pick up a little bit. I'm going to build a story here, okay? I want to pick up where we ended last week. And I want to remind, it doesn't matter if you weren't here, I want to remind you about, for me, what the big idea of last week's class was. It was about Kedusha. And, you know, we started the class by saying, what is Kedusha? And a lot of people wrote the word to separate or to be separate um, or to, to, just, you know, to, to have separation. We spoke about holiness, we spoke about sanctity. And I tried looking through the texts of the Torah and building a lot of different examples to demonstrate that certainly in the Torah, a premise before you could hit holiness or a state of holiness, you have to hit a state of being able to distinguish things, to see nuances between things. And we gave a number of examples of that. Um, we spoke about the Kohanim. On Shabbat, when we were, you know, when we were reading the Haftarah the, of this past week, um, I'm not sure if anybody read it, it came from Yechezkel. And it was interesting because I hadn't read that source before class last week. And when I was reading it, I, we said, oh, here it is again. It said, it's talking about the Kohanim again, and it says, Ve'et ami yoru ben kodesh lechol uben tamet letohor yodeim, right? He says, you need to be able, Kohanim, to distinguish the difference between what's holy and what's not, what's clean and what's not. Why? So because you have to be the ones, and in a controversy, you need to stand in judgment and use the Torah and my commandments to make good judgments. Isn't that so interesting? 
that when it's talking to the Kohanim, it says, I need you to have, and we spoke about how, you know, you're not, you're, they're not supposed to ever be inebriated or have, you know, they need to have be clear thinkers and be able to make distinctions between, I'm sorry, somebody unmuted themselves. Um, in order to have the ability to, to, to maintain good judgment and distance, and notice also to negotiate controversy. Okay, so I, I'm thinking about all this, and I was reading also in Arbi, you know, in uh, on, on uh, Motzei Shabbat, when we read in Arbi, I'll just point this out also, it's very famous, but I, I like when people notice these things, that where do we put Havdalah, in, uh, in Arbit of Motzei Shabbat? Um, the answer is we put it in the blessing that we always have, which is Chonen Hadat, right? And I'm just going to explain that. Right? You've given us this wisdom and understanding. Right? You, you've, you've given us wisdom uh, and, and understanding and Bina. And, you, and from that, you told us, Right? So, so clearly, the rabbinic tradition and the biblical tradition is around the idea that we've, been, that I, we've developed, that uh, wisdom and understanding, it manifests itself in the ability to think critically, to be able to distinguish between truth and falsehood and between what's right and what's wrong, what's clean and what's unclean, what's holy and what's unholy. Um, simple, right? So there you go. There you go. Um, the, we, how does this all relate to the interpersonal is once you start making those distinctions, right? And you have that intelligence, the Torah wants you to use it in order to create healthy relationships and, and a healthy reality for yourself. So I'm going to use myself as an example for today. Okay. So where did, I'll say, where do I go wrong or where did I go wrong this week? I'm going to tell you my story because not, you know, I'm sharing it because I think so many of us fall into this and it leads to real disagreements. Um, Somebody in my family on both sides, it wasn't even my family, on multiple chat rooms, they've been posting stuff about coronavirus, about, uh, you know, conspiracy. I'm going to use the word conspiracy theories. They're going to get very angry. You know, they're going to get very angry. How could you call it a conspiracy theory, right? They posted something on, on my chat room. Um, and, you know, I, I didn't realize that it was a sensitive issue. I'm going to be very honest. I was looking at it and I said, oh, this is, this is crazy. I think that's basically what I said. I'm like, this is crazy. This is a conspiracy theory. We shouldn't be forwarding this to each other. This is dangerous to share because it's like misinformation. I don't, I don't think this is a good idea. And it set off a very bad feelings um, in the chat, right? Where people said, you know, everybody's entitled to their own opinions. How could you shut down debate this way? The, you know, there's this stuff going on. If you want to talk this way, we have a separate chat room for debates, you know, and, and it went like that. And, and it, you know, it really, it reminded me of like, you know, maybe the past three years or three years ago when, when the, the election was coming up and so many families were so divided and so divisive around things. And I was wondering, you know, what, what went wrong there? Like, what did I do wrong just now that instead of, sharing information that I thought was important, I ended up either upsetting or, or hurting people that I, that I actually really care about. And that, that definitely wasn't my goal. So I spent the last week, because it happened last week, basically a week ago from the time that we did this class, um, I spent the last week calling a lot of people on the phone. And I, you know, I called them, they said, you know, tell me about, you know, why, why, why post this? Like, what was, What's compelling to you about this? What were you thinking about it? And then I called other people about, you know, I called a bunch of people from a lot of different perspectives to try to understand like, what am I missing? What did I get wrong? What did I not get wrong? And what I realized is a few things. One thing I realized is that the minute I had gotten into a one-on-one -on -one, uh, calm, measured conversation with my fellow human being, all of a sudden, a lot of the tension 
started to go away, right? We weren't actually fighting with each other anymore. We were talking to each other. And that felt much better to me and to them. Um, there was an interesting article in the Atlantic, if I could share this, because I think it really speaks to this. And then we're gonna, like, we're gonna turn to the Torah in a minute, right? Um, I'm looking at, I have two screens here, so I'm not gonna do a sharing of the screen. I'm just gonna tell you, the Atlantic wrote an article saying, uh, you know, what do you do if someone shares the pandemic video, how should you respond? I was very interested. I was like, yeah, what should I do? I think, you know, and again, if somebody on this chat is like, I'm, I'm leaving this class right now. I don't know what Esther's talking about. It, just hear me out for a minute because what I'm asking for is, is actually that we should just listen to each other for a minute, right? So what the video says is, it says the number one thing you shouldn't do is call somebody stupid. <laughs> And it's so true. And I, I, I was like, it's such a basic part of being a human being that you shouldn't ever, you know, it says, don't make anybody feel foolish, naive, or gullible. Don't say things like, I can't believe you fell for this. Don't say, this is the stupidest thing I ever heard. And I'm talking about, this is just one example of something that, that resonated for me. But for all of us in our lives, we have moments where we think that the person we're speaking to is wrong, right? What do we do in that moment is the question. And what I did wrong is I didn't necessarily jump to listening and to patience. I jumped to, that's crazy, okay? And that's not the first place you should go. And then it says, you know, when you're trying to talk to someone, maybe instead of getting emotional, try to talk through with, um, with data and with facts or share something, you know, something really um, uh, coherent and logical with them. Also validate the fact that there's a lot of stuff going on right now and we don't know what's true and what's false. And there is, it's a time of a lot of confusion. And so that's gonna spark like a search for answers, right? Um, but a lot of the, uh, the advice that was being given, I thought was very significant because all it was saying was, are you listening? Are you being patient? And are you treating the person that you're in a dialogue with, um, with real um, understanding and curiosity? And now I really should have known this because I actually just came from three different let's say school meetings, okay? So when you're in a school meeting with a bunch of people, I want you to know we never agree with each other. You have to imagine if you're trying to run a school and now you're trying to run a school over Zoom and distance learning, how many different opinions are there and how passionate are we about those opinions? I would hope very. The one thing I don't like are, is when people don't actually care about their opinions or don't even have an opinion. I, I'd prefer somebody with an opinion than not. And I was thinking about how the, you know, the principals were talking and there were, there were four of us talking in a Zoom and we really, really, really disagreed with each other about something. But what happens in our meetings is we can't give up on the conversation because we have to lead together and we have to move forward and we have to give direction. So what we've trained ourselves to do, this is like my fourth year working at this, is to spend time being comfortable in an argument and then saying, wait, convince me that I'm wrong. Let me hear, what are you saying? Let me hear what you're saying. Let me hear it again. Wait, look at it from this angle. Wait, let me play devil's advocate with you, right? Let me, and, and what, a, what really happens in a good dialogue is that all the people that are in the dialogue are equally invested in making sure that the other person is being respected, is being heard, and has a platform for their ideas, and that there's a real give and take. Um, I talk about, I know, I know this is becoming like a, you know, I, I'm gonna take, I wanna take a break just for a minute because I wanna read from Pirashat Kedoshim last week. We touched on it, but we didn't linger, okay? It's very, very basic, but it's, it's interesting to read. Um, and, you know, it says here, um, it starts with saying, Lo rachil ba'amecha. Don't uh, go around town being a tail bearer, right? Don't go bearing tail. Sorry, somebody got unmuted. Maybe they want to tell me something. I do here. Um, 
you know, I agree. A lot of people are saying very interesting things on the chat. I love all of it. I'm gonna look. I'm gonna look at it in a second. Um, sorry, it got unmuted again. Just one second, guys. Okay, so don't be a tail bearer. I do think that, and, and then it continues. Uh, don't be. Don't bear tails, and don't stand and watch your friend. Uh, it says you can't stand on the blood of your friend. Most of us feel this means you can't stand by and watch your friend be harmed or killed. Now, the connection for the Torah really goes back to the Aseret Tadibrot, where you can't bear false witness, which is sort of like spreading rumors and spreading tall tales. A lot of people um, are not careful with this. Um, I, hear, I hear people say, words like, well, where there's smoke, there's fire. I want you to know it's one of the most uh, difficult phrases that we use to excuse Lashon Hara, right? Um, to say uh, where there's smoke, there's fire is not really the best way to argue something. Um, if you want to say, look, uh, I, I, you know, somebody's about to get married to someone and you didn't just hear a rumor that there's a problem with the person, but you actually have concrete evidence of it and you could back it up and you've heard it from a number of people. That is quite different from going to the parents of one of these people and saying, you know what? I heard he uh, blah, blah, blah. That's tail bearing. But notice that often the reason why we bear tails or we spread rumors is because in our minds, it's because we don't want to stand on our brother's blood, right? Isn't that so interesting? We say they're about to go into a bad marriage. Shouldn't I step in and interfere? Um, and the Torah says, yes, you have to protect your, you have to protect people. You have to make sure that they don't harm themselves or do something harmful. But the way you have to protect them can't be with rumor and with hearsay, okay? If you're starting a sentence with the words, I heard, I want you to think about the fact that that's not the best way to start a, a dialogue or a conversation. It's probably not weighty enough for people to really listen, okay? So we don't start with, I heard. You want to bring data and facts to bear and show somebody something? That could be very important, okay? Um, ooh, 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 wait one second. I'm sorry. I keep, see people keep getting unmuted. So then it's, so I find that the Torah it's, it, it, it says it in such a tight and, and minuscule way, but the implications are enormous, right? Don't bear tails, but also you have to protect each other. So then how will I protect someone if I feel like they're, they're hearing things that are unhealthy or they're doing things that are unhealthy? Well, it goes on to talk about it a little bit more. It says, Lotus na etachicha bilvavecha. Don't, uh, this one, nobody talks about this enough. I have to talk, I'm glad I'm talking about it with you. Don't hate your brother in your heart. You have to reprimand your, and it says amitecha, which is not even your brother. It's like your, your friends, your, the people that you know, so that they do not sin. This, again, such a delicate mitzvah. How do we see it? How do we execute this? I feel that somebody is wrong. They're, they're, they're doing the wrong thing. Do I tell them or not? Okay, I really am curious to know what your answer to the question is. My answer to you is this. The way I read the Torah is this. You can accept or reject. The Torah says, if in your heart you are walking around, because I'm going to connect the two, you're walking around hating someone and you're angry at someone and you're carrying that around and carrying that around and you never spoke to them about it and you never opened up honestly with them about it and you don't think, and, and they, in your eyes, are continuously sinning, the Torah actually is going to put the burden on you and say, you are burdening them um, with, the, with this, your own personal hatred that's giving them a sin, that there's somebody out there who's angry at me and who hates me, and they never talk to me about it. I feel very passionate about this. If there's somebody, let's say there's a student, this, this has happened to me in real life. 
there was a student that one time in the beginning of freshman year, I said something to them. I don't even know what it was. I don't know what it was. But they were carrying it that every time I saw them in the hall, they're like, she hates me. She hates me. She hates me. And my dream was that they had actually told me that. Now, there are two ways you could talk to about that with a friend. I know some people who think they're being my friend and they say, you know, just talking to you as a friend, your skirt's a little short. <laughs> like, I, I don't know you. You're not my friend. This is the first time we're speaking, okay? I don't, that is not the person that you're giving tochacha to. You don't go around to random people that you're not in a relationship with and give them reprimanding, uh, disciplinary uh, uh, feedback. They, nobody asked you. And this is a good premise to say, how do we all just get along? Well, first of all, if you really want to tell somebody that something's bothering you, you need to be in a relationship with them. Um, you have two options. Either you're in a real relationship with them. That means that you're really close and you're really a friend. And that means you start the conversation in a way that says, can we build on trust? Can we build on the fact that I care about you? Now, if you don't have a relationship with someone, and, and notice I'm using my language very carefully, it could even be a sibling. Meaning, Yes, you could be brother and sister, but are you in a relationship? Do you, do you understand the distinction I'm making? Can you not, I, like, does anybody know what I'm saying? If you haven't spent time on that relationship, meaning you don't call them very often, you don't eat by each other's houses, you, every time you talk, it's a fight, that's not the person you're allowed to call up and give tochacha to. Because first of all, they can't hear you, they don't trust you, they're not listening. So one thing I realized was, why would I start arguing with people in a chat room or on Instagram? I've never in my life argued. Like when I see people on Instagram arguing with each other, I'm just like, this is the stupidest thing. Nobody knows each other. You're just like little things on a crowd. Step away. This is not a place for real debate. This is just divisiveness, right? In a chat room, you're not in front of each other. We're all in quarantine. You can't make eye contact. You can't really dig. You can't really be patient. Not really a place to have, to have these types of, of conversations, right? You could share information politely, but you really can't in a healthy way debate. So if you want to give a friend a piece of feedback, you have to wonder to yourself, did I put enough effort into this relationship that I feel that I could have this conversation with them? That's one. Also, if somebody is really hurting you and you're upset at them, figure out, am I, do I step away from this? Are we really in a relationship that I have to keep being angry? If I care enough about the relationship, I could be angry, but I have to make it better. If I don't care about the relationship, I have to stop being angry. Do you see, the, do you see what I'm saying? Don't hold on to anger in your heart unless you're willing to really dig down into the relationship and get to the bottom of it. And this is something that as Jews, we have to practice more with one another. I see people talking, I do it myself. I don't want to say other people. We talk about black hats and white hats and the gray hats and the things and the Hasidim and the things. You know who you could have that conversation with? An actual Hasid that you know, that you are interested in, that you're curious about, and you say, talk to me about that funeral that a thousand people went to. What was going on? Like, why, right? Instead of, these people are insane. That's not the way we, that's not a path towards, towards building brotherhood with each other, I think, okay? Um, it goes on to say, lo tikon velo titor b'nei amecha. Don't, don't take revenge. Uh, don't hold on to these slights. I want you to love your neighbor as you love yourself. I'm going to take a pause for a minute because I have a few more things I want to say. And we usually only go to 135. And my son is taking an AP at 130. And he said, my voice is very loud and that I have to stop my class in time for him to take an AP so I don't disrupt him. But I want to check the chat because I think it got a little heated. Let me see if I actually really want to read everything out loud. I don't know if you guys were looking at it. It's not letting me scroll up. Give me a second. Chat room, chat room, chat room, chat room, chat room. Okay. Jaime said, a prudent man overlooks an insult. That was our first piece of the chat. Jaime, I could not agree more. 
that if you stay unemotional and instead say, you know what, maybe they don't have all the information. Maybe they didn't realize. Maybe, you know, maybe she doesn't know that what she said hurt my feelings. Always begin with the benefit of the doubt. Um, Sonia Didia said, try to do active listening, same as talking to your kids, like really ask those questions, try to figure things out. Then somebody put the Atlantic article up for me. Thank you. I appreciate it. I thought it was whether you like it or not, you know, it was, it was a very balanced sort of article. I don't care what your politics are, what your beliefs are. It was just trying to say, be nice to each other. Um, E.B. Malice said that Ricky, my husband, was smart. He's always a genius. Um, uh, this <laughs> If I might, he, he yes. quoted actually Shimon Bar Yochai, and he said that um, it was attributed to him that, that you don't um, you, you don't go and ask forgiveness from somebody when, in the heat of a moment. Yeah. And I think the flip side is the same thing: is you don't argue with someone in the heat of the moment. It's so because true. You will be first of all, especially in print, especially on a chat, because you will be sorry later. Yeah. So I think what he said, you know, fits exactly what you're feeling is that you're, you know, you're sort of, it hits a nerve, you got to say something, you get in trouble. And it never works. It, it never yeah. really works. I mean, you could literally, I mean, to a degree, I, I actually, my feelings this week were that I was saying that it was, this, that it was sunny out and somebody else was telling me it was raining. Like it felt like that much of a contradiction. And, uh, and, and then I was, I was thinking a lot about Shakespeare. I have to talk about Shakespeare by the end of this class, okay? Don't let me finish without talking about him a little bit. Um, then we also have, you know, people only want to be validated. Um, they want the comfort that they are correct. I agree, a lot of people do seek for validation, but I think the next comment of, sometimes they just want to be heard. I agree, like, sometimes they just need to talk it out. Um, although a lot of people only like to talk in an echo chamber. Do you know what I mean? They only like to talk if everybody is agreeing with them. I think the Torah says, you're never gonna all agree with each other. That's not what human beings do. So if you don't learn how to listen and to make these distinctions and to use your intellect to really slow it down and think things through, you're gonna get tripped up. Um, feels like they are spreading Lashon Hara about amazing people, Adrian is saying in our society. The truth is, Adrian, I felt very similarly that I am okay with people having opinions, but we do have a policy, and, and this is very important, that we don't let people spread libel, right? We don't let people spread untruths about other human beings. If there are facts that prove it, you can definitely discuss that. But if you are spreading rumors, it really goes directly against what is allowed, and we should be very careful. Now, other people say, wait, but the only reason it's not factual is because the big state is trying to keep it a secret, and I don't know what to say to you other than to say, please spend time. There are so many people in this world who search out the truth in a lot of different ways. Look for facts rather than rumors, really. Um, it depends if you know if they have the potential to be open to the dialogue. I agree. Some people, in the middle of a conversation, you have to go like this. You know what? It's not working. You must step away. Uh, Rabbi Sachs actually wrote about it recently because he wrote a whole book about morality. And, you know, one of the things you need to know is when to not engage because if it's getting things worse, that's not good either. Um, Isaac says, I don't agree with every day being a mishmash. Every day is a blessing, makes each day count. When it is gone, we can never get it back. Every day is special. I agree with you. I think that the Torah wants us to feel that, every, you know, one of the dangers of Zoom is that every day feels like the same day. And our job is to figure out how to wake up in the morning, put on clothes, eat breakfast, lunch, and dinner, and to create those, those separations, right? Um, I'm gonna go a little further. Uh, thank you for addressing this. Um, I actually learned, oh, this is a private one, so I'm not going to read it. Um, Renee Braha says that even facts could be Lashon Hara. It is not our obligation to air other people's dirty laundry. Um, and Sonia says, I feel less Lashon Hara during COVID times because I'm not going anywhere or seeing people. I agree with you, Sonia. The danger is that because we're not in front of each other, we're actually throwing things at each other digitally rather than that intimate, personal experience. So we should look out for that. Um, 
I think it's a tremendous issue that so many people equate a health debate and a fight. So many of us walking around carrying negative feelings, which begin to fester. I, I, I'm going to tell you that I felt really bad because I think the person that I argued with, I, I think I saw them the next day and they did not really wave hello to me. And that's where I get scared. You know, like, um, it's got to be that our disagreements don't reach the point where we can't love each other and still be friends. And I know it's very hard. And if you've ever had any of these really deep down debates, it's very difficult. But when a nation and a people really love each other, I do think that they take the time to figure out how to do this work. If it was easy, the Torah would not have made it such a big deal. Instead, it says, this is going to be a very powerful and important part of your lives. Peggy's writing that you have to agree to disagree. Maybe, but the Torah doesn't say if everybody, listen, the Torah says if people are committing crimes or doing avodazara or doing things that are wrong, you do have an obligation to stop them. The point that this class tried to make is you have to stop people through relationships because without the relationship in place, your desire to communicate or stop anything is empty and null and void. So I guess what I'm saying is, and I didn't talk about Shakespeare, uh, <laughs> um, but I, I will talk about him in the beginning of next week probably. I will just say this as our last anecdote, because it's 136. My son on Shabbat said, for the freshman in Flatbush, read Romeo and Juliet. Of course, it's all about the Capulets and the Montagues and how they don't see each other. And maybe something you guys don't know is I love um, reading Shakespeare out loud. Like now my family does it on Friday night sometimes. We'll just like act out Shakespeare together. It's the funnest thing um, if, if you're me and you think it's fun. And one of the scenes we read was Friar Lawrence. And Friar Lawrence tries to convince the Capulets and the Montagues that their continued infighting and refusal to see each other is just self-destructive. And he uses Romeo and Juliet and their relationship as a way of bridging the divide. He fails, they die. That's not the end we want. But we have to pay attention to try to find ways that we could really reach out across the aisle, okay? Like I really would encourage you, if you're experiencing anything like this, try to do what I did this week make a personal phone call. And instead of getting angry, say, you know, I was wondering where did things go wrong? Like, what wasn't I hearing? And, and do, you, do you want to talk about this? If you think they want to talk about it. If not, it might not be the right place. So many nuances. I could talk about this forever. I didn't give anybody a chance to talk with me. I hope we learned something today. We'll continue next week.